All right, hey, uh, new challenge this week going to you know Los Angeles at a new stadium, um, new environment for our guys, uh, division leading team, good defense that we have a lot of respect for, and uh, you know our guys are up for the challenge. Got to bounce back from from last week. For that, take any questions. And looking back at the offense on Sunday, what did you see? I mean, we ask you every week about after those opening co- a couple drives there in this past game. What did you end up seeing on your look back? Uh, in the in the first two drives. Just, Afterwards, sorry, after, just in terms yeah. of not getting the offense going until yeah, that final all, touchdown. You know, I thought our guys did a great job of, uh, you know, coming out strong, definitely in that second drive, of punching in the goal line and, you know, getting a chance on fourth down to come back and get it get it after that pass interference. They did a great job. And then, you know, uh, coming back, we had that third drive, you know, had a chance on third and one to go to go move the chains there. Didn't get that done. So we will be better in that short yardage situation. we will be better coming out of the half. That's that's something that we gotta. We've been stressing every week, and we got to see the results. So we got to um, keep finding ways to get to our guys, for sure. How, how have your evaluations been of the short yardage situations overall this year? Um, I guess it seemed like it was a little bit of a grind there on Sunday. Yeah, well, you know that, that's a part of the field where you gotta you gotta bog down, you gotta move the football, whether it's on the ground or in the air. And uh, we had our chances, we didn't get it, we didn't execute. So uh, we have to be better there to move the ball and keep our defense off the field. Plant, uh, Justin Jefferson has just nine targets the last two games, five catches. Do you think you need to get him more involved? Yeah, you don't want to come out of games where Justin, uh, you know, has those kind of targets. He's he's well deserving of getting the ball more, and we know he can help us. He helps us win games. So um, certainly, every week we want to get our playmakers the ball, and him, Dalvin, Adam, those are our, our top playmakers. So I've uh, got to be more conscious of that. Third down in overtime, um, I think Kirk said that they were all kind of long developing routes. They brought the blitz. Uh, what was, as a play caller, kind of the idea behind that play? Yeah, the Baltimore did a good job. They, they executed better than we did on that play. Um, you know, would have you know, loved to have a, some better answers for Kirk at that moment. Um, you know, that overtime drive, that those last three plays, you got to be better. You got to move the ball down the field and go win the game. The answers for Kirk there, is it him having more options at the line or is it a different play call to match up with the look they gave you? What, what do you mean by options there for Kirk? Yeah, well, always anytime you on a successful play, you're always kicking yourself as a, as a play caller there, you know, but got all the, you know, got all the faith in the world at Kirk of, of you know, getting us in, in positive situations when something's not there. You know, he's done it time and time again this year and doesn't get enough credit for that, uh, whether it's changing a protection or changing a route concept. And, uh, you know, and, and, that, and that play right there didn't have a good play call for him. But what's the balance when because Kirk's talked a lot about sometimes plays call for the check down because he sees two deep safeties. What's the balance in, in getting him to either check down or give his two top receivers a shot and maybe a 50-50 ball that, you know, might be covered, um, but you know, not being afraid to throw the interception there? Yeah, there is, there is, a, there is a balance there. And, you, you know, obviously you don't want to be reckless with the ball, but there's – you know, we got some some really good playmakers that have a chance to go do something with it. So I don't, you know, want, don't want them to go force the ball into coverage. Um, but you know, there's going to be times where you know we're going to be more aggressive, more aggressive play calls, more aggressive, you know, finding those guys, more aggressive, going and scrambling, or you know, just uh, you know, when you don't have when you don't have success in those situations, you got to keep looking for answers to how you can be better. And that's uh, you know, that's what we're doing in practice here, and just always trying to give them tools to to go and make a play. Went there uh, last in the NFL in rush defense. Are you looking, I would assume, to exploit that? And when you look at the film, why do you think they've struggled in that area? Well, I know that you know the, the numbers always tell the whole story. I think this is a, this is a good defense. They're also really high against the pass. So I think that all kind of balances itself out. But we have a, you know, a lot of respect for the opponent. Uh, we have respect for their run defense. And they got some stout defenders, you know, Linball Joseph and and Bosa, those guys, those guys are really hard to move. They got really aggressive safeties, um, so you know we we know that we're going to have a, a tough t- tough challenge. We're not really relying on the numbers, just trying to go, you know, put our guys in you know successful positions. Why has it been so challenging for teams to throw on them? Yeah, well, I think uh, you know, I think I think they got a good solid secondary. I know they got some in- injuries, but I think you know Derwin James is a heck of a player, and uh, I think. I think they do a good job with pass rush too. So anytime you know teams aren't having more success through the air, I think you got to look at their pass rush, and then you know they're you know they're getting home. So they got they got some good defense linemen that we got to block. Can you explain like a little bit about the autonomy Cousins has at the line? I mean, he's been asked about it. Sim's been asked about it. Like, what does that actually look like? Yeah. 
uh, you know, it's it's something that uh, it's so play and, and situation specific, but it's something we work on all the time. I'm going back the last three years. There's there's times when you know you don't have a you don't have a good play call, and you get hey, I might change the protection. I might I might give Justin or Adam a signal, um, and you know he's done a great job of that. I can't. There's there's so many times this season where he's put that put it on his shoulders and and bailed me out of bad situations. So um, you know he he has done that, and uh, we have all the confidence in the world of you know his instincts to get us into the right play. But does he have the freedom to do that? On any player, or the only certain situations where you say, "Hey, there's a check available here if you need it." Yeah, I think, I think any play. You know, we try to put him in better situations where he, he doesn't have to, you know, go out and you know do that every play because you want to get the ball snapped. You want to play fast. So I think, uh, you know, but yeah, he's got he's got the ability. He's got the tools to do that in each and every play. Could you see a scenario where you're able to incorporate Kenny Wongwu? Uh, in the offense a little bit more. I mean, seeing what he did on special teams, that, that speed, quickness, something you would want to use uh, in the offense? Yes, definitely. And, and you know, Kinei has been uh, proven since OTA that he's he's capable of, uh, you know, being a really explosive playmaker. And we're, you know, glad to get him back and get him more incorporated into our offense. He's, you know, proven on special teams. He's proved it with us in practice. And, uh, you know, he's got two good backs that he's playing with. So we just got to find a way to get him all touches. What did you think about Mason Cole in the relief of Bradbury? Yeah, I was, uh, you know, I was impressed, just not surprised. That's that's been how he's practiced this this entire time with us. It's the same guy we saw in film in Arizona, so uh, we have a ton of confidence in him. He's a heck of a teammate. Um, the game is really important to him, and uh, you can just tell in his practice habits and then the way he performs. So uh, we trust him. Hey Clint, have you have you heard today how Dakota Dozier is doing? You know, I haven't heard today how, how he's doing. You know, I don't want to comment on his medical situation, but uh, you know, he's a he's a top top notch teammate that all these guys really care really deeply about, and so uh, he's in our he's in our thoughts and he's in our prayers, and you know, we uh, want to support him. Back to the center situation. Do you think you'll have Bradbury on Sunday? I don't have Garrison the protocol, so I would I would put that back on on Coach Zimmer and Shug. Um, if if he is, that'd be a welcome. It'd be, it'd be great to have him back, but I, I don't know. Can you compare, excuse me, developing a, a young rookie running back to, like, say, last year, the progression that Justin had, and then maybe this year, KJ? Like, is it is it somewhere in between the two, or like, what do you look for the most to say this running back is ready? Well, you know, I think uh, they they there's there's not a not a science to it. They show us and how they practice, and and Kane practices hard, and he makes plays, and he's assignment sound. So he's uh, he's done everything we've asked him to do, and now he just needs his opportunities. You handed the ball to Jefferson and had him throw. Do you have any like disinclination to do that because he's playing out of position, or is it something you're that confident that he could run those plays multiple times? Yeah, we want to use him as many ways as possible. Uh, got a heck of an arm, uh, can run with it. Um, you know, I think uh, Phil Rauscher and Kennedy Paul Mao did a great job of getting him getting him on the ground last week. So um, he's just got a you know. He, has a lot of opportunities on our offense to, to make plays. How do you approach going against a defense that is so stout against the pass but gives up a lot of plays against the run? I mean, with, with their looks, do they kind of invite the run and you feel like you're playing into their hands to some degree if, if you're running the ball and maybe not attacking the big plays through the air? Yeah, it's a really good question. You know, I think the, this defense, they, uh, you know, coverage, sometimes coverage wise, they, they give you better looks to run the football. but. Um, you know they're they're very multiple and uh, it's a, it's a really good scheme. It's a really sound scheme that we've played over the years. Whether it's a uh, you know uh, Vic Fangio in Chicago, so uh, you know they give you a lot of different a lot of different looks that we're we're trying to give our guys this week. And uh, main thing is we just want to you know get the get the ball in our playmakers' hands regardless of run or pass. Was CJ Ham the first option on the deep ball? <laughs> well, yes and no. Uh, yes. Yes, he was just by the, what the defense did. Uh, probably wasn't. We didn't all think he was going to go there, uh, but I do know once the ball was in the air, if anyone's going to make the play, it'd be CJ because that's just what he does. He he steps up in really big moments, steps up all the time. He's he's a you know a top notch captain on our defense on our offense that we uh, you know we trust to put in any situation. Was Conklin's usage a byproduct of just the way that the Ravens have struggled in covering tight ends, or was there something else there that allowed his targets and catches to be that high? Yeah, I think uh, I think the the plays that that Conk made, you know, the what the defense was giving us, he was, you know, he was the guy that was beating that coverage. So I think uh, 
you know, we just spread the field out, and, and Kirk was doing a good job of, of reading the defense and, and getting the ball to where it needs to go versus that specific coverage. But we're, you know, whether it's Justin Adam or Dalvin, Conk is, is in there too. You know, he's a guy that's he's a he's made plays when his number's called, and a guy that we have a lot of trust in. Yeah, someone on the defensive scout team simulating Derwin James and all the, the places that he goes. Yeah, we do, we do, but uh, you know, Derwin. You know, it's, you can't simulate that. He's a, he's a talented guy, uh, really imposing tackler, blitzer, and uh, really good in coverage. So uh, you know he's a he's a very talented player that we got to account for on every snap.